Good evening and welcome to another edition of the McGraw Report. I'm Harry McGraw, your host, and today we have another exciting guest on our show. From the Woodlawn AME Church, we have Dr. Betty Allen here as our guest, and we're going to be talking about women in the pulpit. You know, this is the uh, end of March, which is uh, National Women's Month, and we've been celebrating women throughout the month of March. And so uh, Dr. Betty Allen is here to give her uh, expert opinion on what's going on in the pulpit with women and uh, how many things have changed in um, the world of the uh, church and uh, AME uh, circles in her uh, tenure there. So uh, give her a call, 312-738-1060. And first of all, I want to say thank you so much, Dr. Allen, for coming on the show. I'm my pleasure. You know, Dr. Betty Allen is a uh, world-renowned author and traveler. She's been all over the world doing missionary work for AME, as well as right here in Chicago. She's done very uh, charitable works, and uh, she's still going strong here in Chicago doing her thing, and uh, we are just so blessed to have her here and to talk a little bit about what's been going on with women in the pulpit. Now, I just want to, you know, start off the show by prefacing a little clip, you know, because uh, a lot of people uh, talk about uh, pastors and ministers, but uh, there's actually a lot of good preaching going on out there with women. And so I want you to check this clip out, and then we're going to come back and talk to Dr. Allen. So hold on just one second. Just open their heart because they say they approved it, so it must be all right. You can't approve what God has disapproved. We got our own dance, we got our own song, we got our own music, and sometimes musicians think you don't know the chord. The Bible says there is a formula, an outline that he's approved and called in worship. I said, well, God, I, I don't want to. Bishop, you have to give me the privilege to go forward. I'm out of time. Okay. Sisters. Sisters and brothers. Because, because you... You just say, well, this is, this is gospel because I said, Jesus, the Lord woke me up and said, Iona, just because you put Jesus in the phrase doesn't make it gospel. The gospel is an anointed story authored by the spirit of the Holy Ghost. We are worshiping God now with our heads. We're worshiping God with our intellect. And God is upset because it's destroying the tentacles of the faith. We are becoming so engrafted into the world until you cannot tell Christianity from Christianity. That was Sister Iona doing her thing in the pool pit. And uh, she is really exciting to watch. I really got a lot out of her preaching. And uh, I tell you, Dr. Betty Allen, women are really stepping up their game in the pool field. Really? They, yeah, they, have, they are making their strides. They are uh, living out their uh, meaning for womanhood in the pulpit and also giving service, Christian service and Christian education and all over the areas of uh, development in our churches. Well, you know, I just want to go to uh, the AME for a second and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, talk a little bit about how they have evolved. And uh, I know you guys elected your first female bishop back in 2000, uh, Bishop McKenzie, right? Absolutely. 
uh, before that time, there had been much discussion and uh, women served in the churches and as presiding elders over districts. And uh, finally, we came to the point where we elected our first bishop, uh, Bishop Vastai McKenzie. But before that, our church on the um, top level or the connectional level had uh, uh, elected uh, our first woman to serve on, as a general officer, and that was Dr. Jamie Coleman Williams. And then following that on the connectional level, we went into electing bishops, which was a time that we did not think that that might happen as soon as it did. Well, I'm so glad that it did. And uh, I know that right now, uh, Bishop McKenzie is doing some work in Haiti, right? You guys are doing some wonderful stuff. Well, uh, uh, Bishop country. McKenzie has been in that area. But uh, the work that was really done by a good woman there who was elected a bishop in 2004 uh, is uh, Bishop Sarah Davis. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did a marvelous work in Haiti. And as a result of her work in Haiti, they are building a medical center uh, in her honor. And it's the, it is going to be called the Sarah Davis Medical Center in Haiti. That is and fantastic. Absolutely. And uh, we hope that center would be up and running within the next year. Well, Dr. Betty Allen is our guest on the McGraw Report. Give her a call, 312-738-1060. We're talking about women in ministry, women in the pulpit, how women have evolved when it comes to uh, religion and uh, ministry. And Dr. Allen is our guest, and she's here to talk to you, Chicago, about all the wonderful things that's been going on with women in the ministry. Give her a call, 312-738-1060. Now, that is really a fantastic thing that, you know, women have developed to the point now that we're going um, outside the country, developing clinics and hospitals. Uh, but tell me, what are you guys doing over there in Woodlawn right now? Well, the Woodlawn area is an interesting area, and uh, it's much work going over there. And we at Woodlawn AME Church uh, extend ourselves beyond the walls in a great way. Uh, we, as a church community, extend ourselves into family life mm -hmm. and uh, Family, the family community, as you know, just recently in the Woodlawn area, we had a, a disaster with the um, two Those young two children kids, yeah. uh, yeah. were burned. And of course, uh, that family is without a home now. And so the churches in the community have gone together and will be a great resource in helping those families get back uh, together and get, getting uh place to live and providing resources that they may uh, resume their rightful place in the community. And uh, so in, in many ways, the church is a great uh, undergirding this family to become a, a family that uh, uh, connected and connected with the community again. However, we also reach out to the uh, school in the community just yesterday. We had um, uh, the Emmett Till School came to our church, and the children did put on two performances. Okay. Wonderful performances. And so these are the kinds of things that we go beyond the walls to be a blessing to our community and, and to help develop it. As you know, we are living in the areas that's close by where the, our uh, new library for our past president, yeah. President Obama. That's right. That's and so we are connecting in many ways in that project by uh, being a blessing in the community. Well, that's, our, that's many wonderful. outreaches. Yeah, and, and you know, to have a presence in that community right now is so significant. Uh, we definitely want to make sure that we have 
uh, our best foot forward because once the uh, Obama Library becomes a part of that community, it's going to have a whole lot more traffic, a whole lot more visitors. And uh, I want to sp send a special shout out to uh, Reverend Robert Andrews over there at uh, Woodlawn AME. He's doing a great job uh, working with the team of uh, ladies over there. And uh, Dr. Betty Allen is one of those uh, key members over there. So um, shout out to uh, the Reverend. We, we really appreciate what you're doing over there in Woodlawn. Uh, now, I heard that in 2016, you guys got another female bishop, uh, Ann Byfield? Yes, we did. In uh, 2016, that was last year, in July, we elected another woman bishop. And this happens to be our fourth uh, bishop that uh, with the female status. Yeah. And so... Uh, the church has really grown, and uh, in connecting with uh, all members of the church in a way that um, we become to the place where we know each other better, and to the place where we can appreciate each other's ability and talent to serve, and regardless of uh, race, regardless of uh, gender, uh, we look at what people might be able to do and render a service in a particular profession. Dr. Betty Allen is our guest on the McGraw Report. Give her a call, 312-738-1060. And if you don't get a chance to catch us on this broadcast, you can also reach out to us via uh, Facebook, Twitter, at uh, the McGraw Report, or you can go to Instagram at the McGraw Report, or you can send us an email at McGrawReport at gmail.com. So if you think of any questions that, you know, you might want to ask Dr. Betty Allen while she's here, give us a call, or you can send them in to those, uh, those outlets, and even after the show, we can get back to you with your, with your questions. So uh, let me ask you, Dr. Allen, you know, 2000 came in, the new millennium came in, and a new, uh, I guess, attitude came about, and uh, the first female bishop was uh, elected. Why did it take so long for a female to get a leadership position like that? Well, um, even though it may have taken a long time for the uh, female person to be elected bishop, but uh, from the conception of the church, uh, there have been female services in the Church of Outstanding. Our first uh, bishop, who was Bishop Allen, his wife served as the first missionary, mm -hmm. and um, she started the missionary work by calling a few of the pastor's wives together. And uh, they would uh, mend socks and provide transportation for the pastors. At that time, they were traveling not by air, not by trains, not by buses, but mostly by ponies or, or feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would mend clothes for the pastors. Wow. So women have always had a great part. But then as the years came on, uh, in the early 70s, uh, the Women's Missionary Society of the African Methodist Church started a, uh, a new committee program, and it was called the um, Black, the Black Women's uh, Research and Status of Black Women. Mm -hmm. And from that, we grew into the appreciation of what leadership could become, and many of our pastors uh, uh, women pastors have become leaders as presiding elders all over our church, including the, the eastern area all the way out to the Pacific Coast. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, then the idea came that we had this great woman in um, the Baltimore area mm -hmm. that even though it may have not been all the time that the top echelon cared about electing a, a uh, woman bishop. But the people, uh, she had done a great work in the church out east, 
and therefore she established herself very well. Like working can, like like politics. You, absolutely. Know, you get your base and yeah, absolutely. you work it. Absolutely. Yeah. Work it up. Mm -hmm. And uh she became bishop in uh when our election came in two thousand. Uh, you guys know out there if you go to church, you know, you know, church folks is very funny folks. You know, you gotta have a base in order to get somewhere in the church. And uh, I can understand exactly what you're talking about there. Oh, yes, and so she yes. climbed into that position through the people. Absolutely, through the people, and of course leadership as well. But um, then the next quadrennial, 2004, we elected two more women bishops. And uh, one was from... Um, the so they had to, out in they the had California to area. get the rhythm of it, you know. They had to get the courage to Absolutely. get involved, and then once they got involved, they were ruling. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, is, that is wonderful stuff. Yeah. And, you know, it, it really reminds me that, you know, leaders are everywhere. And if you have one person take a step, you never know how that person can inspire another person to do something great. And that's part of the reason why I wanted you on this show. Because there are women out there right now that are very active in the church. They do a lot of different things. And some women probably want to do a little bit more. But they need that, that extra little push and that courage. And, uh, you know, that's the main reason why we're doing this show today, Chicago, to let some of you ladies know if this is the kind of thing that you really want to do, you can do it. The path has been laid out for you, and the sky's the limit. You want to be a pastor, you want to be a bishop, it's totally possible. Dr. Betty Allen is here on the McGraw Report. Give her a call, 312-738-1060. We're talking about women in the church, leadership in the church, women that are pastors, women that are bishops, women that are doing some incredible things in the church. Give her a call. And speaking of incredible things, Dr. Allen, you wrote a book recently, uh, Class Leader System. And that book is kind of synonymous with what you were talking about with uh, membership getting involved. You want to tell people a little bit about what inspired you to write that? Well, the class leader system came into effect at the time of the beginning of the church. Even though Richard Allen uh, pulled out of the Methodist Church in Philadelphia, but he took all of the principles and their programs and the things they were doing and he sort of implemented them or integrated them into his own ideas, into the own, his own church, which was the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And the class leader system was one of them. And he carried that over from the Methodist Church, which was started by John Wesley, and that was a major uh, project of John Wesley. The idea of the class leader is having a leader, another pastor in the church, to be able to reach its membership and closely serve the membership. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, uh, many times the pastor may have a membership of 500, 100, a thousand people, and he's unable to reach all of those people like within a week's time. But he has the class leaders who are leading a certain group of so those people. So these are like actual members of the church they, that, that are appointed class leaders. Absolutely. They're appointed class leaders and by they, the pastor. And they're assigned to work with other members to keep them engaged. Absolutely. They're assigned wow, to work a, with so creative. many members. It could be 10 members. It could be 12 members. Because they some of never, these preachers, you know, right now, Dr. Allen, they, they, they just so way up there. You know, they got jets now. They, they, they big time. You know, so many people want to get a hold to them. And, you know, the congregations are three, four thousand members now. You know, it's hard for the pastor to have a, a real one-on-one con -on -one connection. So uh, this kind of strategy, I think, really helps a lot. Oh, it does. It does. In other words, uh, the members feel like they have somebody of a spiritual leader in the class leader. And incidentally, most of the class leaders are women in the church. Wow. Uh, we do have some men, but most of them are women. And uh, they have been trained to serve. Or serve. And, it's, and it's quite a growth area uh, for a woman or for anybody. It's a leadership role, 
and it's an important role. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, serves as, they serve as the under-shepherd of the shepherd. The shepherd is the pastor, and the class leader is the under-shepherd. Well, that is a fantastic idea, and again, anybody that's watching this show, I know there's probably a lot of questions when it comes to the AME and uh, what goes on there, but if you can't reach us today, go ahead and send us an email. You can send us something on Twitter, Instagram at the McGraw Report, or you know you can go to uh, McGrawReport at gmail.com, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to get back with you with any kind of questions or comments that you may want answered. And, uh, you know, Dr. Allen, I just want to wrap up with a few uh, little points because I know the AME is like 200 years old right now. It's one of the oldest institutions in religion. And uh, I know it started in Philly, and Paul Quinn uh, was working with Richard Allen, which... Uh, they kind of like didn't get along too good, so one went west and the other one stayed on the east coast. And the Quinn Chapel was started from this guy. Now, this is a church right here in Chicago that has a lot of historical value. Absolutely. Um, Quinn Chapel is located in the uh, uh, south side of Chicago, like 24th and uh, Wabash. But it has been put on the national um, list of uh, uh, places of historical interest. And um, Paul Quinn was uh, founded by Paul Quinn. Uh, Quinn Chapel was founded by Paul Quinn. Mm -hmm. And when he came in this area, the Midwest, he went from the Chicago, Illinois, on through uh, Missouri and on out uh, churches all out west, all the way to the Pacific Coast. So um, the church has really grown. Uh, we have a membership of over a million. Mm -hmm. And the women's uh, missionary department has a membership of 800,000, including uh, all of the parts of Africa, South Africa, uh, West Africa. Uh, so it's also. really a, a international. Absolutely, uh, kind of absolutely, and we did. We have started work in India. Yeah. Uh, now let, let's let's talk a little bit more about Chicago. You know, earlier today, there was an incident where uh, a young man was shot right outside the Cook County Courthouse on 26th in California, in broad daylight, in in front of you know dozens of Cook County sheriffs and police officers. Um, the church in itself has a lot of uh, followers, but it seems that the message is slipping through the cracks for some. What would you say to a young man like that who experienced uh, a tragedy of that magnitude? Well, um, I would say that a total person is a person who has uh, develop themselves spiritually, physically, and intellectually. The main thing I would say is that uh, the home is an important institution for the family. And then secondly, uh, the school connection and the church connection. I believe those young people who do well in school and who uh, attend their local community church uh, have a better chance of developing into worthwhile citizens and uh, persons that can have so much to offer in our communities, in our country, and in our world. So uh, I would say definitely to parents, work hard at trying to uh, get your children to be successful in school. and. Uh, give them duties at home so that they will feel a part of that home and then improve upon their uh, ability to uh, be successful at school and then make sure that they attend church. Uh, these are the, uh, the community institutions that help build good character and uh, I would think that, uh, that parents should take the lead 
and certainly teachers are ready to uh, receive the children and teach them well, and the churches are ready with their doors open to help our young people all over this land to be what they would want to be. Well said, Dr. Allen, well said. I think that's the most encouraging thing that we've heard out of all the politicians, out of all the people we've been talking to. I want to thank you so much, Dr. Allen, for coming on the show. And uh, we're going to have you back again when we talk about It has been my more. pleasure. It and we want to thank pleasure. you, Chicago, for tuning in to the McGraw Report. Tune in next week where we'll have another exciting guest on our show. This is Dr. Betty Allen from Woodline AME. I'm Harry McGraw, and we'll see you next week on the McGraw Report. You have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.